it's about raising awareness um it's getting people to understand that having dementia is another illness it's a it's it's a disease it's a process that's going on and just because somebody physically looks normal there is things going on inside their brain that is altering the way that they think the way they perceive things and just by making a few allowances you can make a real difference to somebody's life well, you mentioned there the perhaps misunderstanding with people that just because people look all right, they might not be OK. What are the the most common misunderstandings uh, around the condition? Yeah, it's um, a lot of people think that it's a condition, a disease associated with um, old age. It's <clears throat> not necessarily, you know, there are, there, dementia is something that you can get at absolutely any time during your life. Um it's that people are being um, sort of willfully obstructive. They're deliberately not understanding. They're not getting what you're saying to them. And it's not. There's a there's a process that's going on in their brain that's actually destroying brain cells. And that's why they have these problems. Is there also a slight misunderstanding about the prevalence of, of it as well? Because, yes, of course, there are the, the times when it's early onset. People can be really young indeed when they find out that they are suffering from it but the the understanding that actually when you're older your chances of getting some form of dementia are incredibly high yeah they are i mean by the time you reach 65 you've got about one in 16 chance of of getting some form of dementia or diagnosis and that increases as you get older so by the time you're into your 90s the probability that you're going to, to get some form of dementia increases quite dramatically and how many do we believe that are suffering with dementia on the island at the moment? Yeah, the current figure we've got is 1,300 people with dementia on the island. Um, we, Our aim, our objective is to provide services, support and information for every person with dementia, if, if that's what they want. Um, and we put various things in place to, to try and achieve that. We're currently providing or have provided support for um, over 450 people out of the 1300. And is this awareness for people not just or is it for people that are being diagnosed or also the people around them because of course they'll be going through a lot of the similar emotions as those that are actually going through it themselves? Yeah we provide a, um, a carers information support program it's called CRISP. It's uh, a course that we offer sp specifically for carers of people with dementia. Um, it provides them with information about the condition, about how it has occurred, um, what sort of challenges there are likely to be in the future, how you can deal with some of the um, more challenging behaviours that might uh, reveal themselves, um, where you can get legal advice and where you can get um, financial and, and services provided. Being part of the Alzheimer's Society, I'm sure you come across people all the time with you know, various uh, stories and journeys of their own dementia and Alzheimer's. Do you have any personal experience of the condition? Other than my work, no, I don't. I've been very fortunate. My family doesn't seem to have any history of dementia in it at all. So it's it's something I've come to. Um, I, I began working for the Alzheimer's Society about five years ago. And... Yeah, it's been a, a, a journey of revelations for me as well. So, no, I, I don't have any personal experience of it. What is the biggest revelation you think you've come across? How much you can do to make people's lives better. Um, that's that's a real revelation. How you can, the small things that can, can be done just can really make a big difference. And <clears throat> having spoken to lots and lots of people with dementia, if you can break through the barriers that, that dementia brings, the, the, the really interesting stories that people have, and, and quite frequently they're, they're memories of past events from their childhood and from their youth are much, much sharper than mine are. And it's, it's almost like the condition brings that focus to some of the older memories. And they've got problems with their short-term memories. But if you get past that, if you, if you go along to the singing groups, um, if you... <laughs> do um, uh, reminiscence stuff with people and get them talking about their past memories. It's really interesting. And, and, and social, you get a sort of real social history of how things used to be on the Isle of Man, you know, all the, the different cinemas and 
places where people used to go for 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 dancing and drinks and you, know, you get all of those stories and it's 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 a real pleasure that certainly sounds like a really positive sort of side effect of, of what you do i mean what what's the feedback like from people that you come into contact with regularly generally speaking um people come along to um our sessions unwillingly <clears throat> um people don't necessarily you know first time they they they, they hear that we're providing services um, maybe there's that old-fashioned um, idea of, of charity but it's not like that you know I, I look on the way we provide our services the way we're funded which is entirely through voluntary donations from predominantly the Manx public um, it's almost like an insurance policy it's like the, um, the the nation is putting that money to one side for the people that are unlucky in the lottery of life and get dementia so the money's there to be provided with services and that's what we try and do we try and provide as much support services and try and make people's life lives as, as good as possible for as long as possible i've spoken <clears throat> recently to uh, a carer whose husband uh, suffers with dementia for the last five years he was diagnosed early uh, at the age of 51 and as her his predominant carer she says one of the the biggest challenges for her has been realizing that you can ask for help and it I mean, how much of your service do you think people are reluctant because they are just that they they are reluctant themselves to ask for help or accept help yeah it's almost i i think you know there there definitely is that that sort of idea that, that you know you don't want to ask for help you don't want to ask for support but it's just there and it's willingly given and it's not, you know nobody is made to feel beholding for it we don't charge for any of our services so at the point of, of delivery it's all provided um free there's slight difference on dementia aware D dementia action week which is next week um but you know if, if we run a tea dance it, it's always organized by a local business uh, in association with us and they organize the, um, uh, the the theme the music the food the drink all of that stuff's all provided and people can come along and just enjoy the event completely free of charge and of course this <clears> is <throat> for many people with dementia they may be quite isolated you may spend a lot of time alone or just with one other person how much of what you do breaks out of that routine and just enables a bit of respite as well as uh, sort of different to their day-to-day -day. yeah we we have a service called uh side by side which is um it's almost like uh befriending but befriending plus um where we can uh, we find volunteers to do activities with people and those activities can be as as different and diverse as you can imagine you know we um it, it might be that somebody just wants to sit and read read books together or or maybe have a conversation or walk the dog but if somebody like your your friend's husband who is much younger, well, we can do activities, you know, it could be kayaking, sea kayaking, or it could be rock climbing, or, you know, it could be something far more adventurous. And, and if you can keep people engaged and enthused and uh, living an active social life and doing things they enjoy, they're much less likely to, to have the condition deteriorate than somebody that just you know sits in a chair and basically you know doesn't doesn't do much so we try to encourage that sort of um, activity and in engaging our singing groups are always <clears throat> incredibly good um, we've got one in Ramsey one in Douglas and one in uh, Port Erin and we're hoping to get one back into Peel where we used to have one um, and they're really good social events quite often people arrive at them and they've maybe forgotten that they've been before but once they start singing the songs, the old songs, and start reminiscing about previous times and doing the chair-based exercises and you know, sort of throwing bean bags around and stuff like that, they really do engage. And by the end of the sessions, people are always laughing, smiling, you know, interacting, talking. It's 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 a real sea change in 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 the way of that 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 they are. So they they start very quiet but normally finish, as I say, with you know, big smiles on their faces. Um, I wonder how important it is to focus on those positive moments as well, because so much of what you hear about dementia broadly is, of course, quite hopeless stories that people without much positive to say. I mean, 
it's of course an uncurable uh, disease uh, but of course there are treatments too and there are ways as you say like singing and sort of tactics you can build around yourself absolutely and and the you, you can't underestimate the benefits of a small moment you know with somebody singing um we, we've had people before that that maybe don't have much in the way of, of communication skills anymore they you know their condition has deteriorated to such a degree and then all of a sudden you'll 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 be singing I don't know, nursery rhymes or something that's taking people back to their very very earliest memories and you know, all of a sudden they start singing along they remember all the words you know they're, they're they're smiling and they're clearly enjoying themselves and for people that are caring for them that's a really big moment and that that moment might only last 30 seconds but it's getting the person that you knew back for that 30 seconds and it's it's allowing the person with dementia to have a, a moment of fun back in their lives and though if you i don't think you can under undervalue those those moments quite emotional i'm sure as well um almost always the emotion is is happy you know it's it's always great to see somebody being there you know the real person coming back again and you know when we do the reminiscent stuff it's really interesting that if you take away the the problems that people have with their immediate recent memories if you can go back to the place where their memories are more solid and more uh, they're more confident with then the real person starts coming through so it it really does have a, a fantastic effect and that that effect can last for a lot longer because the although they might forget that they've they've done that event the feeling of happiness because it's in a different part of the brain will still remain they might not remember why they're happy but they'll remember that they are well just finally then um <laughs> For the week itself, for those that are interested in uh, finding out more or perhaps joining or, you know, feeling, uh, getting involved in some of those things that we've been talking about, what, what should people do? Yeah, well, if they give me a call on 613181 at the office in Douglas or pop in to see us on the third floor of Tower House. Um, next week, there's a number of different events on there. It's going to sound like I'm reading from a sheet because I clearly am. Um, but there's a train ride from Douglas to Port Erin afternoon tea um, on the steam train um, that's on the Monday on the Tuesday there is uh, an afternoon drop-in tea session at uh, Nobles Hospital the theme of tea is going to come up quite often I think um, that's uh, going to be in Tai B which is uh, the, the cafe immediately as you go into Nobles Hospital um, on Wednesday there's uh, an activity afternoon at the NSC um, where you can do all sorts of chair-based exercises, walking football. Um, we're hoping that refreshments are going to be available. Um, and we're also, on Wednesday, we're doing a Dementia Friends session with uh, the MHKs and the MLCs at Timwood. We'll be up in the Barul suite, um, getting them all uh, de made dementia aware and uh, giving them a Dementia Friends session. Um, Amy McGuire from Just Care is going to be giving that for us because she's one of our Dementia Friends champions. Uh, Thursday we have a singing in the rain I have to try and get that right because our, our singing groups are called singing oh, I can't even remember um, singing in the rain is on at the Broadway cinema right. um, and that's a dementia friendly showing so um, it will be a reduced volume the lights dim but not dark um, lots of support there people will be encouraged to sing along dance whatever um, and you can book tickets for that through the uh, Villa Gaiety. And on Friday, uh, Dr. Jagus, who is the consultant psychiatrist uh, with the Memory Clinic, is going to be the DJ <laughs> at a, uh, um, a disco at the Heron um, Public House in Annika. So um, that's going to be themed. People are going to be dressing up. It's going to be fancy dress and sort of 60s, 70s, uh, 50s, 60s, 70s music. Um, I think I've got a hippie costume somewhere that I'm probably <laughs> going to be wearing. Um, and most of those events are happening between uh, 2 p.m. and 4 p.m. daily. So there's there's lots and lots of things happening. If you want to come along, contact me in the office, as I say, 613181, or contact the Memory Clinic Direct, because they're organize, organizing a lot of it. And um, I must just say that the train is now fully booked. Um, and that was organized by Manx Decaf, which is another brilliant charity. Um, and if you want to go along for um, 
uh, afternoon cups of tea and a really good socialized social event um, Manx Decaf is the place to go to.